I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Ordering Board of Commissioners for January 20th, 2015, and invite you, if you'd like, to stand with me as we offer an invocation, and, and then we'll turn and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, thank you again for a wonderful day in Bowling Green, and we pray that you'll bless us as we consider the items that come before us tonight, and we pray that you'll give us wisdom as we consider them and uh, make decisions that are best for all of Bowling Green, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Commissioner Denning will lead us in the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please call the roll. Commissioner Hill? Here. Commissioner Perrigan? Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. Commissioner Denning? Here. Mayor Wilkerson? Here. And uh, I'm going to do just a little bit. We're going to take our awards and recognitions first for a special friend tonight. And uh, so I invite. Good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Angie Alexi. I'm the Executive Director of Operation Pride. And we were created about 21 years ago by the city and the county to address. Um, beautification issues in Bowling Green or uh, um, areas that need improvement uh, to, um, to better represent ourselves to the rest of the world. And a lot has been accomplished in that time. One of the things that we do on a monthly basis is that we recognize homeowners and business owners who have made improvements to their property. Uh, and that's for restoration, rehab, beautification, those kinds of things. Uh, and we have two awards to give this evening. And the first award is going to be the Residential Award. Um, and that is, oh, it's already up, hot dog. Um, so I'm going to call um, uh, Amy Milliken, at, who's our county attorney, and Sherry Howell uh, to come. They're both representing Kyle Mega. They're both alums. Uh, and this property, I'm going to. Excuse me, this property um, at 1532 Chestnut Street is the sorority house for Western. Um, <clears throat> and it went through a huge rehab. Do you want to yes. say anything about that? Um, about a year and a half ago, um, I asked my father, Terry Hale, to volunteer his time for a little small project, and that was to rehab this house at 1532 Chestnut Street. Um, Chi Omega was formerly located at 1580 Normal Drive, and Western needed that property for the Honors College. So we um, found this house uh, on Chestnut Street, and we just loved it. Um, it had we thought, you know, just a few issues that my father needed to address, and, and a year and a half later, <laughs> he um, asked me not to ask him to help ever hit with anything ever again. Um, but we have, we've re, we essentially gutted the inside and redid the inside, um, added on the outside. Everything's handicap accessible. Um, we are extremely proud of this house. Debbie Shivel, who is a Chi Omega, along with Melinda Hill. Um, Debbie Shivel was our interior designer, and she the house is beautiful inside. I wish I had pictures of the inside. Um, Dad was responsible for everything on the outside, and um, Neil Downing was our architectural engineer <coughs> who helped us make sure everything was structurally sound. So we are very, very pleased with the outcome, and um, the girls are moving in today. So it's a kind of a special time for us. And Sherry and I sit on the board and. It's uh, certainly been a labor of love, but we enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> well, mostly every minute of it. <laughs> there are a few times we didn't enjoy it. Okay, well, <clears throat> on behalf of Operation Pride, um, we'd like to say congratulations um, on receiving the December 2014 Residential Award. Thank congratulations. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> Our second award this evening is um, uh, goes. It's the commercial award, and it's for January. Um, Pipes, would you like to come up here for a second? Come. Up. Um, the a property uh, on College Street. I'm going to let you say a couple of words, but um, uh, because there is a history there. Um, they just went. You just went through a rehab restoration of the facade. Of that property, side, yeah, right. and I'm going to put, put this. Um, would you like to see anything about that? 
Well, what you see on the uh, left-hand side of your screen is a uh, facade that uh, uh, I guess the most glaring aspect was the, uh, was the uh, uh, mismatched uh, brick where a door had been removed uh, decades ago and uh, a, a very old, uh, ugly sign that, that uh, uh, obscured some interesting uh, detail work if you, that you'll see on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, we want it, we uh, you also observe some limestone that uh, because this building is over uh, 100 years old it had gotten uh, uh, it had gotten a lot of it was almost uh, black in places so uh, we uh, unified the front of the building by uh, uh, staining uh, uh, staining the brick to get it to one color uh, we uh, we uh, treated the, uh, uh, the limestone detail work <coughs> with uh, some kind of solution to, uh, uh, to restore it to the original color as nearly as possible. And uh, we took down the ugly sign. We added uh, the plantation window and the coach light. And uh, uh, we're very uh, proud of the outcome. And uh, so I'm proud to accept this award on behalf of uh, all my coworkers at the uh, uh, daily news broadcasting, and uh, I'm also proud that in a, a very small way we could be a part of the very positive changes that are happening in the, uh, the downtown. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. So congratulations on receiving the commercial award for January 2015. Thank you. We appreciate it. And I have to say one more thing, and that is that I really appreciate that uh, you can't see it in these pictures, but this wall over here, so if you're coming up college, they did not touch that wall because there is like an old mural up there that's fabulous. So thank you. <laughs> they intentionally left that for its historical significance. So that's I, great. I appreciate thank it so much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. All right, there's a couple other. Uh, announcements we'd like to make with regard to awards and recognitions. Uh, I want to congratulate Danny Willis. As he retires, he's uh, been with the city for 27 years as a senior equipment mechanic in the golf division. Uh, Donald Gregory is a senior equipment mechanic in the cemetery vision, uh, division, retired after 24 years. And Khalil Flesher, Flesher uh, our police sergeant, retired with 20 years with the city. We want to wish them well. And we also want to congratulate Major Michael Delaney, who uh, received the uh, uh, Humanitarian Award from the MLK Committee for his dedicated service to that organization and to this community. Uh, so we want to congratulate all of them. Thank you so much for all that you have for, done for us. Any other rewards or recognitions? All right, uh, getting back into the order, uh, we have a public hearing, and the purpose of this public hearing is to receive comments about the annual action draft plan draft for year 12 of the Community Development Block Grant Entitlement Program. Mr. DeFebo will be turned over to Mr. Yeah, The uh, city of Bowling Green, as we may remember, is an entitlement community. Uh, pursuant to uh, HUD regulations, we're required to have a, uh, uh, a, a public hearing to receive comments about how we should spend our money. Uh, Brent's here uh, today to lead in that process. Brent. Thank you, Mr. DeFedlo, Mayor and Commissioners, for the opportunity once again to talk about the CWG program. Uh, I do ask those in attendance tonight, we do have some sign-in sheets that will be going around. Please sign in uh, so that we have a record of your attendance uh, at tonight's public hearing. This is year 12 of uh, the CWG program for Bowling Green, Kentucky. CWG actually started in 1974 as part of the Housing and Community Development Act. Uh, this is just our 12th year uh, to be an entitlement community. Uh, we achieved that after, we, after the 2000 census, once we reached 50,000 in population, then we were able to receive this funding. This is a direct federal funding from HUD, and it's based on a formula. Uh, the five factors that go into the formula are population, poverty, age of housing, overcrowding, and growth lag. Uh, so every year HUD takes all this data, turns it through the formula, and then outputs uh, an amount of money that we are to receive to implement our CWG program. Uh, we develop a, last year we developed the consolidated plan, which is a five-year plan which outlines the priorities uh, that we're going to seek moving forward for our CWG program. 
And then each year we develop an annual action plan which lays out the specific projects and uh, initiatives that we're going to take within that year. This is the start of that annual action plan for year 12. So we'll have this meeting and then we'll have another one in April to announce uh, what the initiatives are going to be for this year. The qual uh, priority needs for the consolidated plan, quality affordable housing, neighborhood improvements, and economic opportunities. These are what was uh, approved last year <coughs> as part of the consolidated plan this time. National objectives, these are important. Each activity must meet at least one of these. Benefit to low to moderate income individuals, that would be 80% of the area me median income, 80% or below, or a presumed benefit. And some people ask, what's a presumed benefit? Homeless persons are presumed to be LMI. Elderly adults, disabled adults, those are qualifications or classifications of people that are presumed to be LMI. So there are seven presumed benefit categories under HUD. Also, prevention or elimination of slum and blight. Uh, this is one that we haven't used a lot. 70% of our funding has to go to benefit low to moderate income persons. So that's generally where we spend most of our money. And also urgent community need, and that must be tied to a presidentially declared disaster. Uh, so that would be hopefully something that we don't have to use. Uh, God forbid that something like that does happen to this community. Uh, so here's the process. We're here tonight. We're actually in the middle of a public comment period, which will end on January 29th. Uh, we'll be receiving written comments either by email or by mail to myself or Nick Cook, uh, or we'll accept comments this evening. After that, we'll actually open up our application process. Uh, the application process that we, we tweaked it a little bit last year, we reserved 20% of our annual funding for programs in the community. So organizations can apply for funding out of that pot, that 20%. Uh, we'll review those applications. We'll take them to a citizen committee. They'll review it and make a recommendation to you all, which we'll present in April and then for your approval in May. After that, we have to send it off to HUD Louisville. And then we actually start the CWG year 12, July 1. So it takes about six months of planning to actually start in July, and that's what we're in the middle of. Uh, so everybody talks about what can you do with the money. You can do a lot of things. So here's a, a sample list of some eligible activities. You can buy property. You can improve property. You can improve public facilities. Public facilities and improvements, that would be community centers, sidewalks, stormwater, things like that. Uh, clearance would be remediating um, asbestos or demoing property or taking out blight within a community. Public services are actually programs for people, uh, and CWG limits that to 15% of your annual allocation can go towards public service projects. We can do relocation. If we buy a piece of property or anybody with CDBG funds buys a piece of property and someone resides in that property, you must relocate them to a property. So that's an eligible expense. Rehab, ownership assistance, economic development, and then also administrative costs are limited to 30%. So sometimes people ask, okay, what can you not do? So that's sometimes a better question. We can't build City Hall with CWG funds. Uh, that's one. You can't do general government expenses, political activities. New housing construction is one that kind of throws people sometimes because they would expect you to be able to build new houses with CWG. Uh, HUD has the home program, which is really reserved more for new construction. Income payments, we can't just give people money. That one's pretty straightforward. Uh, purchase of equipment. The way I like to explain this one is we could build a fire station, but we couldn't buy the fire trucks that go in it. Uh, you can't have any equipment that can move. Uh, that's one of the big rules of CWG. Operating and maintenance and then any assistance for, to professional sports teams. Uh, you'll see some of the pictures as I go through. These are past projects and I'll talk about them as they come up in the slides. Here's our past allocation for the past 11 years where we spent our money. 40% for housing, 9% for economic development, 37% for public facilities, 6% public service, and 9% administration. This is over the 11-year life of the program thus far. This is uh, what we use the ARA money for. This is the State Street Stormwater Project. Uh, we installed new stormwater and sidewalk to prevent uh, flooding in that area. Uh, going through some other previously, talked about acquiring property. This uh, Renaissance Village actually goes back to, I think, year one, year two of the program. But here's a list of uh, different properties that were acquired with CWG. Some of them that you might recognize more recently, the Casa Expansion Project over at the Paxton House, and then the Family Enrichment Center two years ago purchased the old health department uh, on Adams Street. Uh, rehab, we used to have the homeowner rehab program years two, four, and five, and I administered that on contract for the city. And then we're actually doing rental conversion now. We're finishing that up. We've got three homes 
uh, that we should have uh, buyers for that the housing authority is taking care of. Uh, this is a picture of the shelter at Parker Bennett Park, a uh, project that the city did to make some improvements at Parker Bennett Park, Parker <coughs> Bennett Park a few years ago. I uh, talked about some public services that were limited, uh, child care services, transit, assistance payments. Uh, we do that with the Bowling Green Warren County Welfare Center and have for a couple of years. Our GED ESL classes that we did through a partnership with WKU's Research Foundation and also the mentoring program that we currently have with uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Bowling Green. This is a picture of some of the students taking the GED ESL classes uh, from a couple of years ago. Some other ones. Uh, assisted brass with some construction, did an expansion of Phoenix Place Learning Center for the Housing Authority. I talked about some of these other projects already. Uh, the picture to the right is the uh, flood mitigation project for Windover Apartments to prevent flooding uh, for some low income housing apartments uh, out Russell Road. So that was a really beneficial project to those residents. Uh, so the outcomes and, and objectives. This is what HUD gives me to work with. Uh, you get three outcomes, three objectives. You've got to pick one that best fits. Here's the table uh, that they give us. I don't like it very well, but I have to show it to you. Uh, so each of the projects must fit into one of these outcomes and one of these objectives. We're anticipating an award of $515,000. That's our previous four-year average. Uh, so that's where we're kind of looking at as a target number for planning for the next year. Uh, all of this is up to Congress. Uh, so. The way I've said it, the formula decides how big of a piece of pie we get. Congress decides how big the pie is overall. So that's until we know those final decisions, we won't know what, what the final number will be. Uh, anything that we do at this point, recommendation is all a planning number until we get a final award number. The picture that you see here is an expansion of the Phoenix Place Learning Center that I talked about earlier, uh, where the Housing Authority provides after school care to the residents of the Phoenix Place. Uh, we do have a workshop. This is something I started a couple years ago. It will be in our NCS community room uh, on January 29th at 9 a.m. Any organizations that want to come learn a little bit uh, about CWG, they'll listen to me talk for a few hours uh, and learn a lot more detail than what I can go over in the few minutes that I have for a public hearing. Uh, I recommend at least one staff member from each agency that wishes to apply attend so they can really learn a little bit more depth of CWG. What you see here is a picture of a house uh, it is now complete, and I think someone's occupying it, uh, at Durban Estates, which is a project that we're finishing up with Habitat right now, where we paid for the infrastructure and the utilities so that they could go in and build houses uh, on these streets. Uh, so if there are any comments uh, that anyone wishes to make this evening, they can do so, or they can submit them by the 29th to myself or Mr. Cook. Any comments from the attendees? Ronin number. Did you? Oh, okay. My name is Paula Quinn. I live at 1437 Park Street, and a lot of you have heard from me in the past. Um, is this program governing the neighborhood rehab uh, program that uh, is bordered by Chestnut to US 31 Bypass? and Fairview Avenue to 14th. Is that included in this program? Yeah, I can answer that. Is that your only question? That is one of my questions. Okay, let me answer that one Okay. Uh, last year, whenever we developed the year 11 action plan, uh, and we set aside 20% for our uh, agency application process, 20% for our administrative fu function, and 60% for our neighborhood improvement program, we identified Census Block Group 105.2, which is the area that Ms. Quinn just described, uh, Fairview to 14th, Chestnut to the bypass. Uh, we had hoped to be prepared to uh, provide a recommendation for what those projects will be in that area. The move to 707 really delayed a lot of the things that I wanted to accomplish in the past year. Uh, our goal is to come back in April with a full recommendation of what those projects and what those improvements will be in that specific area. Uh, our plan is to stay in an area until we feel like we've achieved what we can and then move to another area. Uh, the goal of the Neighborhood Improvement Program is to ensure that we're making long-term investments in our neighborhoods, uh, things, and we're making targeted long-term investments in our neighborhoods. And so each investment will be based on what are the specific needs of this area. So as we move to another area, those projects, those programs might change because they were developed for that one area. Okay. I would uh, request 
that you extend the program to include the 1400 block. It stops at the 1300 block. If you could extend it to the 1400 block, that would carry it through to Cavill instead of ending at a 14th. It would include the properties uh, in the 1400 block uh, between Chestnut and the bypass and Fairview Avenue and Cavill Drive in this rehab program. We desperately need help. I live in the 1400 block of Park Street and in the past year and a half have called in 26 individual complaints about properties on my street. I'm the last permanent resident and homeowner there. The rest of the people are absentee landlords and it is a problem. A lot of the people in this area uh, have built new properties so some of the streets look really nice and some of them look pretty bad, including Park Street. So I just uh, hope and pray that you'll hear me and, and you know, just ex extend your plan one more block to, uh, so that those properties are included in the rehab and rebeautification program. Thanks very much. Thanks, Ms. Quinn. Does anyone else have a comment for the Community Development Block Grant Action Plan? Anyone from the Commission have a question? Thank you, Mr. Childers. That'll be the end of the public uh, Thank you. comments and the end of our public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Dale. We appreciate it. Mr. DeFebo, do you have any comments for uh, us tonight? The only comment I have, Mayor and Commission, will be a need for an executive session. Kate will read the reason. Pursuant to KRS 61810C for discussions of proposed or pending litigation against or on behalf of the city, and pursuant to KRS 61810G, discussions between the city and a representative of a business entity and discussions concerning a specific proposal if open discussions would jeopardize the siting, retention, expansion, or upgrading of the business. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. And the approval of minutes for the regular meeting on January 6, 2015. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Is there any comments or discussion? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Next item on our agenda is those who have public comments. If you'd like to make a comment to provide to the City Commission, we'll uh, make that available to you at this time. I understand that there is a group here and they've given me a list of three people who are be Coming forward to make some comments, I'll invite you to come to the microphone. If you would state your uh, name and address, please, so we can have that for the record. And uh, as in our public comment section, we'll have to limit you to three minutes, and I'll set my timer so if you hear that thing, you know what, it, what it's about. So, go right ahead, Mr. Ritchie. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, my name is J. Todd Ritchie, and I'm a sophomore at Western Kentucky University. My official address is 250 Fox Trail in Glasgow, Kentucky, but I'm not sure if that helps you. Um, I live on campus at WKU. Um, I'd like to speak with you all tonight about an issue that has galvanized the support of so many people in this room, and that is fairness for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender residents of our community. I have an incredibly short duration of time to say what I would like to say, but I will do my best. I'm certain that each of you all are aware of what fairness means, having nothing to do with legalizing same-gender marriages. The term fairness implies exactly what it sounds like ensuring that all members of our community are treated fairly, allowing them to have the right to live in a safe home, eat, and work without fear of being evicted, asked to leave, or fired for their sexual orientation or gender identity. As of now, those who identify as LGBT are subject to legalized discrimination, but you have the power to change that. We just celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. for his work in the civil rights movement. Looking back at history, we remember those who so bravely stood up for what is right. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Today, the struggle for equality for members of the LGBT community is the civil rights movement of our time. The tide has turned and history is on our side. But while so much progress has been made across America, we still have work left to do. And that's why I'm here tonight. I want you to be brave. Be brave enough to carry on the movement for justice in this generation. Be brave so that our community can have, the L can have LGBT fairness. Do it for future generations so they can be proud that you stood up for justice. Do it, commissioners, because it's the right thing to do. 
And we have folders that have a list of 77 business supporters of fairness, as well as information regarding fairness and what it would mean for our community. And we have two more speakers to speak about fairness, and I believe that's all I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Ritchie. Next up is Don Langley. I believe you're next, please, sir. I'm Don Langley. I live at 714 Eastwood Street. I'm a property manager, self-employed. I've been a property manager in Bowling Green for 30 plus years. I am in support of the fairness ordinance. I would not discriminate against anyone because of their sexual orientation or their gender identity. The organizers of the fairness ordinance are hardworking, tax-paying, law-abiding citizens, just like everyone else. They only want to be treated fairly when they apply for employment, housing, public accommodations such as restaurants, motels, parks. Other cities around the state of Kentucky have already adopted the Fairness Ordinance. Bowling Green, Kentucky is the largest city in Kentucky that has not adopted the Fairness Ordinance. I think it's time to look at this ordinance seriously, get it passed, get it on the books, and move on. And I am 100% in support of the Fairness Ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Langley. And Londa Stockton. Sorry, I apologize, I'm a little nervous. I've never spoken in front of such important people before. <laughs> um, but my name is Londa Stockton and I live at 1260 Pokesville Road in Oakland. Um, but I am speaking on behalf of Hope Harbor here in Bowling Green. Um, I'm one of the community educators at Hope Harbor, and we are proud to be one of the 75 local businesses supporting Bowling Green Fairness. As our community's sexual trauma recovery center, we want our community to know that we are a safe space and we welcome everyone. Some may ask themselves, why do we care about fairness? If we look at the statistics, 44% of lesbians and 61% of, of bisexual women experience rape physical violence and stalking within their lifetime. Almost half of bisexual men and four in 10 gay men will have experienced sexual violence within their lifetime. We know that the LGBT community is a very high risk population and we know that they need support. Looking at those numbers, we realize that the LGBT community is a significantly higher rate for risk for sexual violence, thus, Passing an ordinance that protects against discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity only makes sense. LGBT fairness protections are needed in Bowling Green and Hope Harbor fully supports it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stockton. All right, that's all I had on my list. If I overlooked anybody, I apologize. And we'll continue on with the first item for consideration. You guys are welcome to stay for the entire meeting if you want. Most of ours are pretty boring to deal with, but uh, you're welcome to, to stick around as long as you like. The first item is Municipal Order 2015-14. Municipal Order approving the probationary appointment of Brian K. Scott to the position of Senior Trades Worker in the Parks and Recreation Department. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Denning. Mr. Febo. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we had a recent uh, uh, position get evacuated in the park and rec, uh, a senior trades worker. We went out uh, for a solicitation uh, for help. We had a candidate who uh, chose uh, not to uh, complete the job. We re-advertised, and we're here tonight uh, to fill, uh, ask your permission to grant the position to a uh, Brian Case uh, Scott. Uh, he was interviewed. He was uh, 
deemed to be the best of, of 11 candidates. Uh, critical part is Brian has uh, the needed master electrician skills and his 20 years construction. I believe uh, Brian is here as long as, as well as his wife in the back. I believe Brian's sitting on the back row, so it'll be a second before we can say hello to him back there. Brian, I believe we can see you now. Stand up and let everybody know who you are. Congratulations. Look forward to the work that you're going to be doing with us. Uh, is there any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-15. Municipal order approving the appointment of Robert Doc Doggerty and reappointments of Clark Arnold, Kimberly Boucher, and Roger Miller to the Bowling Green Warren County Military Liaison Board. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. These are either reappointments or appointments by virtue of the position that they hold either with the PFW, the Legion, and so forth. Uh, any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-16. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting bid number 2015-28 for storm sewer improvement located at Sheffield Court, lot number two, from Carter Douglas Company of Russellville, Kentucky, in the amount of $35,710. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perry. Mr. DeFebo. We've been having some uh, difficult stormwater issues near around Sheffield Court. Uh, Melissa has been working with... Uh, people in that neighborhood to effectuate a solution. Uh, we have a cost-effective solution to solve the problem. We went out uh, to bid. We had five bidders, and the lowest bidder is uh, Carter Douglas. Uh, Melissa's here if you uh, like a technical vetting of the issue. Uh, Joe Denning has also been involved in this and uh, helping us understand the problem. You been out digging the sewer, Joe? Yeah, okay. I had to get my bulldozer. <laughs> Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-17. Municipal Order authorizing a change order to the contract with Scotty's Contracting and Stone LLC of Bowling Green, Kentucky in the total amount of $33,508.75 related to bid number 2014-34. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Uh, as the commission has remembered, we, uh, put, we increased the amount of uh, money available for paving this year to $900,000. Uh, that hasn't stopped us to have the need to spend more for paving. Uh, we had some uh, needed changes on College View and Bryant Way that required us to do some additional paving. Uh, we have some other old paving money that we keep in reserve that we think is, should be used to uh, increase the amount and to cover these two needs. Uh, Melissa is here again if you'd like uh, to question her. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-18. Municipal order authorizing a one-year extension of the letter agreement with Capital Link Consultants. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Uh, uh, politics and who gets what is always a, a game of uh, interest, and it's important for uh, cities like ourselves and other uh, groups in the community to have our interests placed before those in Frankfurt and or Washington. Uh, the Chamber has realized this and put together a partnership of, uh, of groups uh, putting in various amounts of money over a year period to hire uh, capital link consultants. Our contribution is uh, approximately $6,000 a year. 
uh, last month, uh, we were entertained and informed about how uh, that money was uh, was used. Uh, we recommend your approval. And the, these funds uh, don't come from the general fund; they come from a uh, lease payment that we were not expecting in the previous year. So. A minor windfall, so to speak. Yeah. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Didn't make me to make you wait. Municipal Order 2015-19. Municipal Order approving construction and accepting maintenance of Technology Way extension in the Kentucky Trans, Trans Park subdivision. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perrigan. Mr. Febbo. Uh The Trans Park is uh, in the city of Bowling Green and is a, a, a sub-development that we have to accept. It's been in the process of being improved uh, for many years. We're here tonight to again acknowledge its improvement by taking to, into our domain uh, part of technology away, approximately 370 linear feet of roadway and a medium uh, to be maintained uh, by the city. Uh, this meets all the specs. Melissa is, is here if you have any questions about why her her department approved this. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. First reading of Ordinance BG 2015-1. Ordinance relating to budget amendment. Ordinance approving amendment number two to the City of Bowling Green, Kentucky annual operating budget for fiscal year 2015. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Febo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is the second uh, budget amendment of the year uh, for the public. Uh, the City Commission is responsible with staff to make sure that uh, any significant changes uh, to the budget are done so with discipline involving the commission's approval of any changes. The changes here in number two are essentially ministerial involving either grants or new revenues coming in, into the city. Uh, Jeff, do you want to comment? Or did that pretty much cover it? That covers it. Uh, so we recommend your approval. And Jeff could handle any technical questions if you like. Hello, okay, material here. Is there any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. First reading of Ordinance BG 2015, number two. Ordinance providing for the issuance of general obligation bonds. An ordinance of the City of Bowling Green, Kentucky, authorizing the issuance of City of Bowling Green, Kentucky general obligation refunding bonds series 2015 in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $10 million for the purpose of refunding a portion of the outstanding City of Bowling Green, Kentucky General Obligation Bonds Series 2007, the proceeds of which in turn finance the costs of the acquisition, construction, and installation of various public projects in the City of Bowling Green, Kentucky, approving the form of bonds, authorizing designated officers to execute and deliver the bonds, authorizing and directing the filing of notice with the state local debt officer, providing for the payment and security of the bonds, creating a bond payment fund, authorizing acceptance of the bid of the bond purchaser for the purchase of the bonds following the advertised sale of the bonds and repealing inconsistent ordinances. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Phillip. One of our uh, responsibilities is to provide uh, the best quality of municipal service at the lowest possible uh, price and cost. Uh, we even watch our costs in terms of the cost of money. Uh, we have had for past borrowing. Jeff has done a pretty good job of uh, refinancing uh, more expensive debt f for less money. We're again here tonight uh, to ask you to again refinance. Uh, I would pro I think it would be appropriate to turn it over to Jeff and Gene considering some of the technical issues. Jeff? Uh, most of the details, I think I put it in my memo, uh, we are going to only do $10 million uh, right now think outstanding on the 2007A bonds, uh, which were issued, as you know, back 2007 for various uh, projects listed in your memo as well. But we looked at this one. Uh, we're staying under the $10 million uh, threshold because we can get a, a lower rate if we stay $10 million or less on a bank-qualified issue. And what basically that does is it gives um, 
banks or whoever opportunity to take tax credits, all that kind of stuff, on the $10 million uh, bank qualified. So we're only going to take $10 million out, uh, but just this $10 million of the 11.6, I think, that's outstanding is going to generate about $1.2 million in gross savings between now and 2032 but for the next 18 years. So we're going to probably save somewhere between sixty-five dollars and $70,000 from here on. So it was kind of too tempting to pass up. Uh, net, pre net present value of that is around $975,000 uh, today. So uh, if the, hopefully the market will hold for another couple weeks and we'll get this issued and, uh, and reap those savings and use them for other purposes. No extension and no extension or? maturity, same maturity as it as the 2007s, and th those were 25 year bonds. So we're going to stay with within that parameter. 2033. Why, why do you not uh, bond the other million or so? Well, it we go from a bank qualified <laughs> issue to a non bank qualified, and it makes quite a bit of difference in the interest rate that we can get uh, out in the market. So. A tax exempt bank qualified issue is probably uh, well several basis points cheaper than a tax exempt non qualified uh, municipal bond issue. So it just makes a difference in the rates. And so if we if we if we go over the ten million, we can't declare any of it as bank qualified at all. It's got well, got to be non bank qualified, which takes you to a higher rate, which knocks out a lot of your savings. So. Um, this is going to be an advanced refunding because they weren't callable until 2017. So this will have an escrow built in. But uh, come around 2017, we'll look at the other piece, whatever's left out there. We maybe have an another opportunity to call the rest of it for uh, a cheaper interest rate. But these had an interest rate somewhere between tw 3 and 4 percent, and we're going to get down in the twos on, on most of these for aver on average. So. Uh, need to take advantage of this opportunity. Is each, each governmental entity a lot of the $10 million amount, like yes. us get 10 and the county gets 10 for each year? That's right, and BGMU is in the same, under the same umbrella as us, so we, we, we try to share our $10 million. In the last year or two, we gave up that $10 million to, for them to do some things, so uh, I was a little greedy, but uh, I'm going to take it all this year for 2015 and, and, and take advantage of it. Any comments or questions? I'd just like to thank you. You always do a great job for the C. Thanks for looking out for our best interest. Appreciate it. Well, you can thank uh, Richard Delaney at uh, Raymond James as well. He, he helps okay. me watch out for opportunities like this. So. Well, That's thank great. You. Thank if you. he's watching, we thank him also. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. That's a last item on the agenda. We're going into executive session, but there will uh, be a decision. There'll be no vote. No vote coming out of there. So our next scheduled meeting is February 3rd, 2015. Thank you for tuning in.